In 2006, two backpackers went on a hike. They wanted to explore a remote wilderness in southern Oregon. But what they found was a challenge they weren't expecting. We were in way over our heads, but we didn't care and we are stubborn. And then we started descending and it was a complete disaster and we lost the trail. It was sunny and it was hot and it was hard. And it was during that trip on our hike out that we had the experience of just physically throwing sticks off the side of the trail as we were hiking because we were so pissed about hiking and stomping over these same little sticks in the trail over and over again. Gabe and Jill had found the Calmeopsis. It's one of the largest wildernesses in Oregon. In 2002, it burned in a massive forest fire. The fire destroyed all the trails, including the trans Calmeopsis that crosses from one end of the wilderness to the other. It wasn't clear if the Forest Service would ever rebuild the trails again. So Gabe and Jill had an ambitious, maybe even crazy idea. They would rebuild the trail themselves. We didn't have agreements with the Forest Service until we were at the trailhead with our tools ready to leave. Clearing fallen crisscross trees over rugged terrain was a huge obstacle. But they actually had another challenge. They had to do all the work by hand. Because of federal wilderness regulations, they couldn't bring in trucks or chainsaws. A young couple from Portland soon realized they needed help. Wild Rivers, this is SMC Red. We are in service working the Babyfoot Lake Trail. They found that help in Aaron Babcock. He grew up around forestry and, you know, working in the woods. Yeah. I didn't. And right away I could see, I was like, this guy's good. So you do a slight angle to the downhill side and then another slight angle here so that this log that's gonna fall will actually fall all the way down to the ground. <laughs> How about we get everybody over here? How about you, Daniel, you wanna help too? Sweet. When I first started doing trail work, I was drawn to tools like the double crosscut saw. There's something about it that just makes you feel like an old timey lumberjack. The tools are strong, they're burly, they're coarse. It fits my personality. No, Luke! <laughs> I don't know, I guess I'm just that kind of person. I like to chop things, move things, roll chunks of logs down the hill. When we started working on the Calmeopsis route, we thought it was gonna take one year. It took like five. The trail they had chosen to take on was no simple walk in the woods. It climbs up ridge lines and plunges down deep river ravines. It twists 26 miles through the heart of the Calmeopsis. The more that Gabe and Jill worked in the Calmeopsis, the more it began to reveal itself to them. They discovered that they were not the first couple from Portland to fall in love with a strange and wild place. Lilla Leach and her husband John came from Portland in search of undiscovered flowers at a time when this wilderness didn't even have an official name. One day, Lilla came across a flower she had never seen before. And she was struck right away by it in bloom. And she sat down and she said, this is something new. But Lilla had to fight to be recognized for her discovery. Because back then, botanizing flowers were the, it was a man's world. So Lilla was this amateur botanist trying to fight tooth and nail to get recognized for finding this plant. Lilla eventually won her deserved recognition. The plant was named after her, the Calmeopsis lichiana. 
but her discovery actually created a new threat. The nursery owners were pillaging these populations of the Lichiana. It was soon clear that the small clusters of rare flowers were in peril. So Lilla and John pressed the Forest Service to create a protected area. It was named after Lilla's flower, the Calmiopsis. The protected area was later expanded and is now Oregon's third largest wilderness area. Gabe and Jill have devoted their lives to keeping the Calmiopsis accessible for other folks to discover and fall in love with as they have. When not clearing trail, they spend their vacations here, camping and swimming. They now bring their kids. Their son, Carter, is named after one of the creeks. And their daughter, Azalea, is named after one of its flowers. And I've gotten to know this area like really intimately where you know every footstep, you know every turn, you can see the changes year by year. It becomes this character of, of your life. It shapes you and then, you know, with working out here, you shape it a little bit. And it is, you know, there's a lot of give and take. What started as a challenge to reopen a trail has become Gabe and Jill's life work. A once impromptu group of friends and family is now an official nonprofit organization, restoring trails across the Siskiyou Mountains. Looking back, I think that if we hadn't started doing it when we did, that to try and attempt those same areas now, as after all these many more years of trees falling and brush growing, I don't know if it would be possible. I think we, we hit it at a time where it, we were right on the cusp of it actually being too much work. And it's really good to be in a place now where regular maintenance once a year does it. 